All right. We're here. We're here. And in the words of a of a pretty interesting uh character, all it takes is one bad day. And now we're here. All right. So I'm Demetrius. And I'm Demetrius. And Meet Meet presents the Blurred City Podcast. All right, so just as an update, we are recording this the day before the episode releases, so we're recording this Tuesday, October 8th, so this movie doesn't deserve a long uh, review, but we are kind of just like, you know, making do with the time that we have. Um, Meech, before we get, no, you know what, hit us with legal Spiegel. I think we need that first. I was going to say, because the purpose of this podcast is to explore digital and print media. All sources we reference are owned by their respective companies. And our thoughts and opinions are strictly our own and reflect no biases or corporate agendas. Your discretion is strongly advised for this one. All right. So, um, yeah, we were supposed to record this about maybe a day or two ago. And then, Meech, I remember you messaged us. You saw uh, Never Let Go. And S, when I texted you, like, when you want to record, I just got out of seeing this movie. And I wanted to text, you made the right choice <laughs> and seeing the movie better. <laughs> but I was like, I can't spoil, spoil what happened so <laughs> well all all i gotta say is that by the time you had texted like when you want to see it i had already saw the rotten tomato scores <laughs> so i already was going in with a certain mindset but i was hoping to be wrong yes all right so this can be our pre-spoiler chat um so just like the mindset going into the theater so like you, I really hate like how reviews drop. Um, well, not even necessarily reviews, but just kind of like the the feelings, the kind of aura of the movie dropping like a Tuesday, Wednesday stuff, like right before you go to see it. So unless like you're completely off social media, completely off the internet, it's gonna slightly affect your mindset going into a movie uh, a bit. So when I saw it, I was like, okay, man, they say this movie is terrible, and it's like, okay, is it just the the musical aspects of it um do people really hate that and then i saw like the rotten tomato score where it was like when the audience and the critics have the same score that is not good at all uh so i really tried to go in like trying to like it because i remember the first suicide squad movie had like very bad ratings um but i i really enjoyed that movie so it was like i kind of didn't get it um certain other movies have been hit or miss with that um, some on the opposite, like The Flash, where it was like, it got really a lot of high reviews. People were saying, this is an incredible movie. And then we watched it and we were like, this is some, some doo-doo. Uh, so with that, I, I really tried to give this movie a chance. If you want to talk about your pre-spoiler chat. Uh. All right, here we go. So yeah, as I said, like I, like, I wasn't trying to see like the, the rotten critics to uh, the score and whatnot. Unfortunately, I was forced to see it in order to go and try to like, get my movie ticket because I was like, all right, let me just get my movie ticket real quick. Bam, see the score. I'm like, oh, oh, no. Oh, my. No, no, no. This this can't be the same Joker movie. Um, That that was my mindset going out because because, again, like I'm coming in as a guy who liked the first Joker movie and like I liked that dark aspect to it. And of course, when I heard it was getting the sequel at first, I was going like, why? But then secondly, it was, uh, it's like, and then we l learned it was a musical. I was like, even I was like, mm, I'm gonna give it a chance. I'm gonna give it a chance. And then I see the reviews. I'm like, Ooh, but I'm still gonna give it a chance. I'm still gonna give it a chance. Cause like you said, like it could be a case where, um, uh, where they may have agreed, but it, it could be a case where like things were going bad for it on the initial outset but then over time it becomes a cult classic like with john carpenter's the thing again highly regarded as probably one of the best uh horror movies of all time and it bombed at the box office or things like uh i, don't, I can't think of any other one but there's, there's plenty of examples yeah yeah there's plenty of examples out there of like oh Event Horizon, that's another mm -hmm. horror movie example. I mean, again, this is October, so I have to be in my horror bag, uh, or any of the Friday 13th movies in my horror bag. But uh, where it bombs, but but over time, it gets the acclaim that it deserves. So I was going in thinking, like, okay, maybe it's still a good movie. We just, ha people probably just not locked in yet. People are just not, like, in that mindset, or, like, they don't see it for, like, what, 
what it truly is. And then the then then the movie happened or didn't happen. All right, for related recommendations, I mean, I would say you have to watch the first Joker, but once you watch the first Joker, I would recommend not watching the second Joker. Um, and then maybe the Killing Joke to an extent. I know that's a bit controversial. Of nah, the movie. nah, nah. Or if you there... wanna, if you want to watch Killing Joke, skip the first twenty minutes. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I know it's controversial uh, stuff, but yeah, this. All right, so we're just gonna get into a brief recap. This actually. Will be... Yep. Here's my recommendation for this movie. Uh, you can watch The Joker, right? If you really want to get back into your Joker bag, go watch The Dark Knight. Or you can watch Death in the Family. Um, that oh, yeah, yeah. One. You can I know that. Like, one of them is like, it's like pick your choice as well. Yep, that. that's Death in yeah. the Family. And also, uh, watch uh, Matt Reeves, The Batman, and uh, The Penguin. Uh, I'm, I'm still going to say Penguin's, Penguin goaded right now. Absolutely. Uh, we should have done a review of that instead of this. All right. So this is going to be the briefest recap that we have ever done um, in terms of the story. And then we're just going to talk about whatever happened uh, with this movie. All right. I guess there is play the spoiler music. All right. Joker is in jail. Joker is in, on trial for obviously killing five slash six people in the previous movie. Joker gets gaslighted by Harley Quinn, who is just referred to as Lee in this movie. Um, yes, again, he's put on trial. A question that is posed is, is he author or is he Joker? Um, is Joker split personality? He eventually embraces the Joker persona until he admits it's an act in the uh, final act of the movie. Harley says, nah, that ain't it, fam, and leaves him. And then he's uh, reconvicted of the crimes. But then a car bomb happens in the courthouse. Uh, he escapes. And then that's when he does go back to his old home finds Harley and she's like, goodbye, Arthur. Um, I, I love Joker, not you. And then he's arrested again somehow and then killed by Joker number two, uh, who is the Joker that like uh, cuts his mouth open. So that's that's the movie, uh, what happened. A lot of nothingness that occurred, some singing. So I'm gonna talk about, first I'm gonna ask you, Meech, what happened in this movie? How did this occur? And then we can talk about our theater experiences. You you ask me how did this movie happen? Cause I got I got I got a story for you on how this happened. Uh, I actually got some inside footage. All right, um, where or insider knowledge where apparently the director Todd, Todd Phillips, right? Initially, he I believe yeah he did the uh original Joker film, and and he only intended it to be just a standalone one off movie. But of course, Warner Brothers. Of course, the movie had to do gangbusters. It had to do money, do, do numbers. And it's like, all right, Todd, write us a sequel. And he's like, no, no, there's, there's no, there's no need for a sequel. And then he was just like, you know what? Nah, we want to make it a franchise. So either you do it or we get someone to do it. And he's like, all right, fine. You want me to uh do Joker too? All right, I got you. I got you. And then this happened. That's how this movie happened. Yeah, I heard bit rumors, but now that she just like confirmed it of how he felt about this movie, I heard he didn't even really like the first one to the how it blew up to an extent uh, from that and how fans viewed it in a sense. Oh, oh, that actually goes into my notes real quick. Uh, um, point number one of like of like, OK, so I have mainly three things. It's either the good, the bad and the what in the world. What in the world? I need answers. So one of the good points was like, all right, this is a major commentary on just like, you know, the true crime fans, all the freaks who all the people who are like glorifying like killers and all that good jazz. Cause like, all right, we look at, you look at Lee Quinzel. I, I ain't going to call her Harley Quinn. Cause she don't deserve it. <laughs> nah, that's Lee. All right. So Lee, right. In this movie turns out, Okay, you first meet her, she in Arkham Asylum. She's like she's a, a patient there and she but then it turns out she's a psychiatrist and she willingly committed herself to to Arkham just because she wanted to meet Arthur, aka Joker. So she became very obsessed with this man just from seeing his uh seeing his flick to the point where again he gaslit this man into becoming Joker. She uh she did the thing with him. Uh, See, that was weird. How did she get into um, isolation with him? Because I thought that was a hallucination. 
have to. Nah, it, it, it wasn't. Here's, here's the reason why it wasn't. It's because her family's rich. Mm. It's because mm. her family's rich that's like, all right, she got money. You know how easy it is to bribe uh, cops these days, especially in Arco, especially in Gotham. There you go. I, I do like the part of, you know what? I'm going to talk about the theater experience first. Um, okay, okay. So, yeah, do that, and then I'll talk about this. So when I, I went to, again, saying I kind of wanted to give it a chance, went with someone to the theater. Um, So the first, like, real singing part that happened, uh, like, when he when it was like, oh, you're not cra crazy, you're competent enough to sing, and they did that singing number. I was like, okay, this is a bit jolting for a superhero, well, comic book flick, in a sense, and I was like, but I can rock with it. By the time they started singing the tenth time, it started to become torture. Um, and the thing is, is like I was rocking with it at first. There were parts that were compelling. I will give it that. And then they would just randomly sing, or it'd be a random hallucination of singing, and then it would come back, and it'd be like, yo, what are we doing here, fam? And then so like with that. And again, this is a two hour and 15 minute movie for some reason. And then so, felt longer so, than that, my guy it felt longer. I'm rocking with it. I don't know what point it is. I think it's like after um, after the, the smaller guy puddles spoke. Oh, I thought that was the best. I thought that was the best part of the movie. Yes. So after he spoke, they did like another singing number. And at that moment, the person that I was with, like, by the time they got to, like, the 15 I'm singing randomly, we just started looking at each other and just giving each other a look. And they were, like, done. And then it felt like we both had this reaction at the same time. I don't remember when. Where it was just like, why is this movie so long? <laughs> Please make it stop. Uh, so when the movie finally ended and he gets killed and I'm just like, I, I don't care. We look at each other and we immediately just burst out laughing because we don't, we can't even comprehend what we just watched. <laughs> this movie was so bad. See, we, see, uh, it, it was a bad warning sign when we, saw, when the opening of the movie was a uh, Looney Tunes uh, opening. We, we should have knew that that something was up uh, immediately with that. Right. But uh, where he, where old uh, Joker gets beaten up by his own shadow. But uh, but yeah, here's my experience, right? I go into the movie theater. Uh, of course, like I'm sitting in in like a row, and there's only an elderly couple like sitting like way further on the back, like way further on the side of me. And I'm just here. I'm just like I'm like bruh, bruh. <laughs> no, honestly, it was like around the second or third song. Wh whenever they did like oh yeah. Uh, build up a mountain or something like that. Yes, it was around that point I started losing. I'm like, bro, why are they singing? I'm like, why are you singing? Because, because here's the issue, right? Here's main issue number one. Yeah, the musical numbers full on kill whatever tension, whatever build up was yes. happening in this movie. Yes, like if we look back to Joker one, that tension was building. Yeah, and I was feeling it when i watched that film recently with somebody who who was watching it for the first time she was like legit getting chills because and like was getting antsy because of everything that was building upon building upon building this movie had me at the exact opposite i was like okay they're building up to something musical number slaps you right outside i'm like ain't this Oh, oh, uh, Arthur Fleck dancing, dancing in the rain. Oh, Arthur Fleck, uh, doing this, Lady Gaga doing a musical number. Slap you right outside this movie. It just felt random. Um, so with that, like what you're singing, uh, what, what you're mentioning, I think this movie, again, I don't even know if he tried to make a good movie or not. So we kind of just have to put that out there. But in the first Joker movie, when he did the dancing part of it, you were like, okay, this is, it felt like something, like a character trait added to the tension of the movie where you could see, oh, he isn't right in the head, but it didn't cut away from the movie. Um, in this one, whenever he did the singing, it like undercut a lot of what you said. And then once with the dancing, it didn't hit the same. And so I think this kind of fell into the trap of the Venom Let There Be Carnage thing where it's like, oh, Eddie and Venom have such a fun dynamic. They have like 
a quote unquote rom com relationship. And then when it got to, and that was like what made the first Venom really good. It helped add to the character of the movie. And then in Venom, let there be carnage. They were like, oh, let's make the first sixty percent of the movie uh, a rom com and let them like get back together. So in this movie, when they like turned it up with the singing and like it didn't add to the character because it took away from the story in my opinion and so like with that it's like puddles what an amazingly acted scene Mm -hmm. like arthur you were my friend you were the only person that didn't make fun of me i can't sleep at night because of you and then going to the part later where he's like yo i'm not joker i'm arthur and then people leaving him that's compelling like those two parts are the most compelling parts of the movie and they undercut it with the singing and then just like a nonsensical story because nothing happens in the movie. Yep. Like, and even going into like, yeah, what you mentioned about the Gary scene, like that was again, my favorite part of the movie because, cause that actor was giving it his all. And also Joaquin Phoenix, like he played that beautifully because like it was a combination of starting off hilarious mm-hmm. with you know with Joker like giving his best Matthew McConaughey and impe- pet impression yeah and then it slowly devolved into just actual tragedy which is exactly kind of what the first Joker movie was like start off a little happy go lucky not not really but uh but it had yeah. with some yeah some whimsical moments in there and then devolved as it kept going that one scene literally did all of that and it had me like my eyes were like almost watering a little because because of how well done it was because of gary's like emotion and then seeing like joker's reaction like him nearly being in tears and he's like yeah oh and then he immediately get punched in the face when the when the musical number came after that you know another part that really hit that was another good part was when um I forgot the character's name in the uh the movie, but Zazie Beats like oh so from the first one Sophie yeah so when she's talking to him and they're like saying oh is this person different from the Joker persona and then it's like oh what did his mom say about him and she just starts talking about how his mom went in on him and like hates him and you see him devolving from Arthur so when it like f- then it's like him fading so you're still like oh is it Arthur is it Joker and he's like fading and like it sparks that light up and you see the joker and it's like okay he's about to take over but then they do another musical number and it just like undercuts all of that it's it's so frustrating because like you can have a musical with good Les Mis is one of my favorite musicals ever it's actually one of my favorite movies like this movie made me cry more than up um and there's tension within the singing and different parts of it it doesn't take away from the movie and I think that this they wanted this to be a musical and they were like eh, maybe not let's just have musical elements to it and it just wasn't executed well and then it didn't go with the story because you can't say that any of the acting was bad which is crazy because like mm-hmm. I feel like every actor was doing their thing is this they didn't have well everything that they worked with everything that they contributed was undercut by writing by directing by just like so much which is crazy mm-hmm. and also don't forget the part where uh like again it also ties into the whole commentary on true crime when so it's like hey i need i had to move because of the fact that like all these joker fans kept harassing me like like i was like yeah. i was the next part i'm like bro that's real and i like, caught that immediately because you mentioned that like think about what's really popular right now the menendez brothers there's one like um like Netflix TV show that's like a drama dramatization of it. And then there's another like it's not a documentary, but it's like essentially their point of view from it. Like uh it's not a biopic. I don't know the proper term for it, but it's like them like giving their own perspective from it, the the actual Menendez brothers who are in jail. Mm-hmm. Also there's like the Aaron Hernandez story on Hulu, which is again another dramatization of crime of someone that committed a lot of crimes and stuff like that. Where it's just like, okay, this is really popular. And I mean, like, maybe it wasn't last year, but the monster one with uh, Dahmer. Yep, with that Jeffrey was a, Dahmer show. Was another popular thing. And I think that's really cool because, like, over the course of the movie, you saw, oh, Arthur thought people were rocking with him when they were really rocking with Joker. And that kind of ties into, like, the mask and different personas that we have to play 
throughout life. Like if you go to like a fast food joint, you don't necessarily care that the person, you know, has their own problems. It's like, hey, let me get my burger and fries and get up out of here. That doesn't mean you like hate the person. It's just like that's the social contract of what we're doing here. And it's like we don't care about you, Arthur. We just care about Joker. So yeah, that that was rough, man. Um, I have a random fan. I see. It, I had talking points with this because I thought the movie would be like halfway decent, but we're not doing I'm, it. So I'm not. We. I still have my whole entire list of what the he- of the bad parts of this movie and all the questions I really have. I have a random fan theory. Um, if if you want to hear that about this, movie. yeah, just 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 go, just go. So I think that Todd Phillips was assigned to Sarcast, um, to destroy the Elseworlds universes. Um, so with that, uh, James Gunn has his own, and Peter Safran have the established DC universe, which is going to kickstart with the Superman movie in 2025. So that's going to be like the main, let's say, MCU universe. But because show or movies like the batman slash the penguin and then also joker before this came in are they were grandfathered into it because they were so successful successful he was like okay it's going to be an elseworld so you see like a penguin and matt reeves is going to have his own universe but at the same time it's like i think it was like oh y'all make you all want me to do a sequel okay bet (laughs) and it's just like make the worst joker movie ever which is gonna like destroy the elseworlds thing and like keep it (laughs) just that one dc linear so i'm scared for the batman universe (laughs) nah 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 because here's the thing here's the thing everyone's universally loving everything that came from the batman like again you got the batman the riddler year one comic and the penguin show all three of them are doing gangbusters and And, like, everybody's all for it. In fact, Matt, I mean, not Matt Reeves, uh, James Gunn, he specifically stated that, like, hey, there wouldn't be three Batman running around. You just got rid of potentially one. So, yeah. Yeah, he got got rid of one with Joker. So, that leaves two. And he he should know that if, if anything happens to the Matt Reeves verse, there will be riots in these streets. Me. All it takes is one bad uh, movie or TV show from that universe and it's going to get shut down after the Batman 2 comes out because if the it's not even like um, it's an ego thing because like he's James Gunn has already confirmed Batman uh, Brave and the Bolt. So it's going to be a different ba- it's going to be dad man with him and uh, Damian Wayne as Robin. If people are like, I don't want to watch this. Give me Robert Pattinson. And then the Matt Reeves universe produces, like, they say, hey, let's do a Mr. Freeze standalone TV show or uh, a Mad Hatter, which I would actually be very interested in. And that doesn't do well. They might pull the cord on that whole universe, man. I'm telling you. All I got to say is, hey, in Matt Reeves, we trust. Like, the man has, look, the man has done no wrong. All right. That's it. He has not done wrong. Okay. People turn on you, man. That's all I'm saying. We thought the MCU was untouchable. They started putting out halfway decent movies, and people were like, "Nah, we got to quit." That's because the right people weren't in. <laughs> the right people weren't like staying with it, being consistent. It takes one misstep. So, what other talking points and questions did you have? <sighs> all right, can we talk about the mishandling of Joker real quick? All right, all right. Cool. So here, number one, he kills nobody in this movie, none. And the only times you see him getting violent are in the in the hallucination slash musical numbers where he's dreaming about killing people, but he doesn't go through with it. All right, that's number one. Number two, Manz is a whole simp. Yeah. He a whole simp for Harley. He was a simp in the first one, though, but it was, he was delusional within it, which is, you know. that No, that I kind of see, it kind of like helped with attributing yeah. to his madness. I agree. Now this on the other hand, no, this is different. All right, because she was actually there, mm-hmm. so she was actually in his ear and actually gasly and manipulated him the whole time, which, which is actually uh, different from the actual usual dynamic. Yes, like the only other time where this was the case was in the Telltale Batman games, mm. where Joker was not Joker; he was just John Doe, and yeah. Harley was the whole problem. Um, and it worked for that. 
because they wanted to do something slightly different, but it worked because again, Telltale series they they rarely miss. All right, but this this just was not okay. All right, now and then also again the ending where time with Joker two. All right, I mean our uh, Joker two point carving his face, mm-hmm. and then but finally, can we talk about how uh Joker basically got uh got diddied? Oh. Oh yeah, that part was. Uh, see, when I first watched it, I was like, "Okay, he got jumped," and then I was like, "Oh, he got his bear behind." Now I don't want to acknowledge what just happened, and it, but but then I saw another review, and I was like, "That's yeah, that's what happened." And I'm just like, "Jeez, yeah." It's like okay, and also the fact that him getting diddy is what kind of slowly, well, that and also the death of Ricky, Rick, hmm. uh, is what led him to repent. So the man got diddied into not being insane anymore. Excuse me? You know, oh my gosh. She, she, another thing that was cool was like the one, like one of the musical scenes that was actually good was like when he initially comes back from the jail, uh, from the courthouse and it first donned the Joker thing and they sang when the saints come marching in and yep. it's framed as like, oh, you see the Joker rising, um, him taking yes. over. And then, yeah, that's obviously like after certain things start happening, but yeah. And then like, when he died, I was like, okay, this kind of can t- slightly tie into the three Jokers uh, storyline that they tried at once because obviously, like, the dude that killed him began to, like, cut the side of his uh, his mouth as well to kind of, like, oh, I'm the, the crazier Joker, in a sense. But, yeah, it, some decisions in this movie. I was like, why did that need to happen? Mm-hmm. It's, it's insane, all right? But, all, but now, now it comes a good part, right? This is what I'm going to say is... Like these are some questions I have. I'm I'm gonna spitball them and see like, hey, see our point of view. And in fact, all you listeners, hey, feel free to comment and feel free to email us like your answers or what your thoughts are for some of these questions. All right. <clears throat> Was Harley actually pregnant? I want to say no. Um, see, because at first I was again, I was like, was that an hallucination or not? And then you're explaining it, but I want to say no again. I don't know how time progresses in the story but i think it was part of the gaslighting part because she didn't say that until he was like yo i don't want to go back to where i used to live and she's like oh i'm pregnant and that's like okay i I got you so i want to say no because she was again was ready to leave this man super quick (laughs) true 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 i guess i i kind of thought like like either like she at, at first i was thinking like she was pregnant until like much later in the film when when us, when after Joker, like, well, Arthur renounced the Joker title. Yeah. Because, and then that leads to my second question. What happens after she renounced it? Did she but bang herself? Didn't she just like, but wasn't it framed where it was like, oh, she was about to shoot herself when he was uh, calling, but then she ended up being there when at, um, at the stairs. Yeah. When nobody else was around. <laughs> And remember, he Arthur didn't have any drugs in him. If it's a delusion, why would Harley... Why in his delusion would Harley turn him down? But he did have the delusion where Harley shot him. Ooh. Dang, that's a good, that's a good question. Um, I think it ties into the story more where... I don't think he... Because hmm. as soon as he said Joker doesn't exist, she left him and he internalized that. I don't know. I don't know. I I, I, I want to frame it as like, yo, this dude is a loser and she turned him down. That's how he got caught. But that is a good option to think about. Yeah. As I, said, I in my opinion, I think she def she ended it like in the apartment, like probably like in Penny's actual apartment. Like, again, just proving once and for all, like the whole like theme of you true crime fans be crazy. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And and then him going up, he thinks he sees Lee because, again, he's disoriented from getting blown up. That was a good point you just made about that. Yeah, being up the stairs with no one around. Yeah, there was nobody else around. And by the time she leaves, that's when all the cops shows up. That's a good point. I'm like, oh, nah. So, oh, nah. I don't think, like, she was there at all. Uh, And, yeah, and then, again, like, like, do you think that was Joker number... Like the, I want to say yes. And does this tie to uh 
because with the way he carves his uh face to a smile, mm-hmm. you make it it kind of somewhat kind of uh tries to allude to the Heath Ledger Joker. That's what I heard as well. Um, have you seen Gotham, the TV show? Yes. So you know how they handle like what Jerome, Joker, Jerome, Jerome yeah. and Jeremiah Valesta. Yep. How that's what I kind of got the sense of. It's like Joker, in essence, is kind of like a mantle to an extent too. Where it's like, okay, yes, uh, this guy is, you see him as Joker, but it's like, okay, this is the real Joker. And that's kind of like, kind of I was thinking it was like, oh, Arthur doesn't want to be Joker. The dude that killed him will like take over and embrace the Joker role. Was kind of how I saw that at the end of the movie when I still had some brain cells left. Yeah. Yeah. When I wrote that question again, I had no brain cells left because I, I was not, I wanted Any, to be done. Anything else you got? Oh no, nah, no, nah, I'm I'm done. I'm done. You know what's crazy? And this is gonna kind of touch into like why I give it the tier that I give it. A lot of what we talked about with this movie, it has very good elements in it. Mm-hmm. Very compelling elements to think about, to talk about, to witness. Incredible acting. It's just cause like we've seen bad movies, whereas like the flash, we were like, why? You really thought she was doing something. Uh, there are movies that we haven't seen, like Morbius and Madam Web, which are both rated higher than these, this movie. Yes, the fact that this movie is being compared to Morbius, to it's Morbin time, is actually absurd. If you had asked anybody, like, months ago, like, oh yeah, Joker 2 is basically the new Morbius, people would have slapped you. All right, so usually we give awards. This movie does not deserve an award. Um, So we're going to get straight into tiers. Usually we name the tiers. Uh, we're not doing that again. So it's from an F to an S tier, with F being the worst, S being the one of the greatest of all times. That's not happening. With this one, Meech, what are you giving it? You already know what I'm giving it. For squandering. See, it's, it's not enough. Listen, I was initially going to give it a D tier, just because, like, okay, the strong parts are really strong, but it's but the, now I'm more reflecting on it and the fact that like it squandered all these good parts. There's nothing other than the F tier for it right now. You you might turn me to your side ultimately. I it's because of what you just said, where it's like the D tier. The movie has strong parts to it. Like it's not like a movie where it's like there's nothing to it at all. Um. There are elements where, like, we even had managed to somehow have a discussion about this movie somehow uh, because of what was in it. So I am going to give it a, a tentative D, closer to a D minus. It, it's an F tier movie, though. And oh, uh, uh, I really don't want to talk about this movie more again. All right, but uh, but yeah, it's like think think about it. What like this is the type of movie where. I will not watch it again. I will only YouTube clips of the good part. Specifically, Joker interrogating Gary. That's the only thing I will ever watch from this movie. Yeah, I have nothing else to do with this movie. is going to get erased from my memory very soon. Uh, so we're sorry, listeners, that you had to watch this if you did watch it or hear about it. But if you didn't watch this, we did the hard part for you. Uh, so You're welcome. <laughs> So with that, we're going to get into a brief what's hot and get up out of here. Um, Meech, what you got? All right. Now to uplift thy spirits, let's get into anime, right? Because we we cooking in the anime sphere. Thousand Year Blood Wars back. Blue Lock is back. Okay. Eating. We're eating. All right. We also got some My Hero. It's actually ending the week that we are recording this episode. Like the seat. Like the season is ending. Oh no. Which is gonna lead into the movie. Okay, okay. Which is gonna lead into the movie that's about to drop. Also, again, One Piece staying goaded. Reincarnated. Why is One Piece looking like a whole movie every episode? Because they ain't spending their budget on Dragon Ball. Uh <laughs> that's why. And speaking of Dragon Ball, Daima is dropping. Yes. Two days after you you're listening to this episode. It's going to be beautiful. And speaking of Daima, Spark and Zero's dropped. <laughs> greatness. Greatness, I tell you. I already l- unlocked Goku Black. 
you already knew what I was going to do. And apparently I unlocked them in the easiest fashion too. I was like, oh, oh, this how you unlock? And it's a wrap. I don't need anybody else. I'm going straight online. Is is um cookout Frieza in the game? Nope. Uh uh-uh. uh. Dang. Nah, nah, no uh no uh no rag. cookout, no uh do rag, no um no get your card revoked, none of that, none of that. But uh but also also this game actually kind of proved to me that Super Broly is actually the best character. It's actually the best Broly. Ooh. Because all right, so in the game, like, you can, like, do switching. Like, you know, when you're doing, like, a team of five, right? Mm-hmm. And if you swap from Goku to Super Broly, Broly says the line, says, Kakarot, get back. And he says the same line with Vegeta. It's like, Vegeta, get away. <laughs> Letting you know Broly about to do some work for our boys. Super Broly's best Broly. I'm taking no debates on that now. It's also partially black, so we're gonna we're gonna claim that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He he immediately he immediately uh got my he got my card. Uh, he going straight to the cookout. We not fighting him about that either. Oh no, nah, no, nah. <laughs> I'm just fighting him freely, yeah. along with along with Chi Lai and Limo, because Limo unk. Yeah, he, ha- <laughs> he ha- no, he gets the card just off rip. All right, all right. Oh yeah, yeah. TV. Sorry, my bad. I I got right. I got absorbed into Diamond. All right. So we got Agatha all along, which is still going strong. Then, but but we ain't worried about that right now because we need to talk about Penguin, baby. Ooh. We need to talk about that last episode, baby. I think the next episode is also going to be a flashback of how she got the hangman. Oh, my. Boy, the Penguin is so good. <laughs> See, the thing about Oz that I don't even know, I don't know if he's gas when he's gaslighting and when he's not. That's the so best part. This girl is playing 3D chess. Dude, because I'm like, yo, this man is 100% gaslighting Bic. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, no, he's really not. And I'm like, what is happening? And you can see how he's just like playing people so perfectly. And then when people catch on that he's playing them, he immediately has like two different stories to like get out of it. And Penguin Best Show, man. I, oh, that's all I got to say because good heads, because. Look, 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 the way he masterfully, like, weaved his way in through the triads, that was master class. Dude, when he was, when the triad dude was like, this dude has to call me, I was like, there's no way they can get this done. I was like, how, how is this going to happen? And the way he did it was... <laughs> and like, when I, so I saw like, it was him and Vic in that uh restaurant, and he was staring at that table, I was like, What's ha- what's gonna happen to those two women in particular? He's always moving pieces. <laughs> it's like I have to. This is one of the few shows where I have to actively lock in because I need to see like, all right, what chess piece is being moved, and how can like I'm trying to predict what he's gonna do, and I'm wrong. The the thing that um that kind of I'm nervous about, but I don't think it can't. It can even be this character, but Vic, you know how there's like a Victor Zaz? Um, and I don't think it can't be him, but the fact that his name Vic keeps scaring me because I'm like, don't do like don't co- corrupt him, Penguin. No, 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 no. I can't I, I can't I can't I can't see Vic like that. I can't see him like that, man. I can't, I can't, I can't. He, he no, I can't see him carving up his no, 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 no. Take up space, take up space. No, 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 take um, but then he Oh, the fact that they name him Vic scares me. I know the last name is like different. I know like the Zap, but we've already seen some like changes in the like uh, lineage of like in the Batman universe. So I don't know. I I'm scared. I don't know either, man. But God, I love the show, man. Absolutely. Now, as a matter of fact, I'm I'm done before I keep speaking. What you got? All right, just with anime, uh, Dandadan. I don't know if you saw the first episode. Oh, it's out. Yes, it's out on oh, Netflix. Yeah. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me lock you in real quick. That, I bet. That oh, it's hilarious. I don't I even know if you know the premise. I'm not going to tell you if you don't know the premise because it's so funny. Uh, hold on. Let me let me get let me get on game. Let me get on game. I'm I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Let's let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. So if you don't know the premise, I'm not going to spoil it. But it's super funny once you get into it. Um, Blue Box is another one. It's like a rom com that just came out. I heard it's really good. I. 
I can't remember what other things the studio has made, but that studio has made some really good rom-coms. And another one, Trauma is Back in My Life. Um, ReZero dropped a 90-minute special um, for the first episode of season three. I thought it was... I was scared because the first, like, hour of it was wholesome. And then it ended how ReZero always ends. Dang. <laughs> With trauma. And I was like, oh my gosh. Um, there was one thing that caught me off guard because I thought he lost his power in season two, but maybe I read that wrong, um, how it happened towards the end. But ReZero was back. And then another one, Don Machi. I'm not going to say the English uh, translation for it because that is not <laughs> what the show is about. <laughs> so so I'm going to say Don Machi season five. I was about to say, sir, sir, sir. That's not what the show is about. Sir, oh. sir, watch yourself now. Watch yourself now because we, tr listen, I've done a lot of damage to this podcast. I'm trying to make sure we are afloat right now. There's a, I'm not going to say the name of this one. This one that's supposed to be a, a, a romance one that has one of the most egregious names ever. I'll tell you off the podcast what it is. So, so with that, we're going to get to our plugs. And we're gonna heal. All right, let's let's go ahead and heal the world. Uh, into my venom too. All right, so for our Instagram, our ex formerly known as Twitter and Threads, we're under Blur City Twenty Two. Like, comment, subscribe, stay up to date on our notifications and our release schedules. We also have our our Discord linked to our Instagram, where you can be a fine community of pure degeneracy. That's all I'm gonna say about that. We also have our YouTube and our Patreon, Blur City Pod. If you want to get access to very exclusive episodes never before seen, go ahead, take a list. Go ahead, hit that subscribe, you know, get donate a little bit to us. Get access to exclusive episodes. We also have our email address, BlurCity22 at gmail.com. That's where, hey, if you want to leave your thoughts on Joker Folia Do, because, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the name of it is exactly right. It's called Madness for Two, and I'm already one. Um, and then we also have, you can also get, you know, email suggestions for episodes and all that good jazz. And if you want to leave hate mail, hey, go ahead and do so. It'll only be in the spam box, never see the light of day. And then also we have our Blurred City Apparel under BlurredCityApparel.com. It's also linked in our Instagram page. Hey, if you want to cop some good hoodies, you want to cop some merch, Go ahead. We we got Blurred City merch, baby. When we have product out here. Exactly. We we move in uh drops, but uh or should I say bliss? But uh but in any case, I I'm also the Jedi Ronin on no no the Jedi born on Mustafar. My bad. The Jedi born on Mustafar on Instagram and TikTok, however long we got that left. And that's all I got. What you have? All right. I just want to go home, honestly, after watching that movie. But this my individual author pages are my Instagram, Mitri underscore dash. That is M-E-T-R-I underscore D-A-S-H. For my X slash Twitter, that is at the Mad Dash 16. And then if you're interested in my book, Phantom Reckoning, A Most Irregular Tale, that is available on uh, Barnes & Noble, Amazon, and Kindle. So just what to look forward to since we're getting deep into the month of October. We're going to get into our horror bag. So next week, we are going to do one of the, one of the most popular meta horror movies of all time with cabin in the woods we're going to do a movie review of that then we're going to get into an avp aliens versus predators econ deconstruction reconstruction which should be fun and then to wrap the month off we are praying on our heads and knees for this movie to be good as we need it venom the last dance let let noel please lead the way please Norman, read us all right so with that um I don't have any words of encouragement other than just do better, um, people. So, do you have anything, Meech? There is no Joker. So, to the Joker movie, it is goodbye forever. Um, but for us, it's goodbye for now. And that's the Blurred City Podcast. See y'all later, unless your name is Joker 2. <laughs> <laughs>